morning, everybody. Well, this morning, I'm gonna start liquidating some of the things that I have for fishing because I wanna buy the new Hobie Pro Angler 14 foot 360. If you don't know what that is, Pro Hobie came out with a new kayak, about, I think it's this year's model. And it has a drive system that operates in any direction. So you could literally sit and turn in a full circle without ever leaving your spot. Like it'll pedal sideways, forward, backward, um, just with the turn of a handle. So it's something that for me, being a crappie fisherman and fishing structure, that's very important. When you're in a kayak in the wind, typically the wind wants to blow you away from your spot nonstop. You'll pull up to bridge columns and even though you think you're in the right position, you'll still get blown off your spot. So with this new 360 drive, it gives me an, a way to kind of combat the wind and the current and stuff like that. And it's really important to me since I spend so much time on the water. I love my Slayers. I've had a native Slayer for about 10 years. I've had the first one that they ever sold here in Texas or here in Dallas at Mariner Sales. I bought their first model they ever got in. And I've never looked back. I've had five of them since they came out and i had two of the lizard lick in 13 foot or i think it's 12 5 but they call it a 13. i've i've had two of the lizard lick that's one of them and i had another one that i sold recently i've had battleship gray camo blue and oh my very first one the first one i bought was solid lime green and then i bought this 10 footer last year for things like the sand bass run and doing small lakes, you know, pond hopping, places where I have to carry it down, because those those 13 footers are pretty heavy, um, especially rigged out. Even with Boondock Landing gear, it, it's a pain in the butt. Um, if you look th back through my channel, you'll see an episode where I'm on Denton Creek and I drug this 10 footer, well, about half a mile or three quarters of a mile, maybe even further, back in the woods to get to the water. So that turned out to be pretty handy but today i got a guy that wants to come and buy my trailer and i've never showed you guys this trailer this trailer i built from a harbor freight a heavy duty trailer it's their hd model the higher weight capacity it has the 12 inch wheels with bearing buddies i put a i put the trailer jack on it so that it, you know, it would sit, sit up level and I wouldn't have to pick it up off the ground. Um, it's a pretty nice little trailer. I went in and put eyelets all around in strategic places for tying off the kayak. Two in the front, two on the sides, and two in the back. And what the front and back one does is I tie it from here up to the back of the kayak and back down on the front and back. And that keeps it from sliding side to or front to back. And then these side ones on the sides keep it come from coming side to side so i bring the straps from here over the top of the kayak to the other side and strap them together if you're carrying one you could slide it right in the middle and strap it down to both sides or if you're carrying two you've got the larger pieces of conduit one of the things i did was i used the gray electrical conduit because it just looks better than that white does um, it turned out nice. When I get these kayaks off here shortly, I'll show you guys what it looks like. That black thing down there is a is a rod locker that I built underneath it. So that rod locker is just three quarter inch treated plywood, and then I covered it with deck over um, paint. It's paint you paint like decks outside to waterproof them, and then I put a. a a seal a rubber gasket all the way around it so that when it's closed it's watertight and it worked really well it's got LED tail lights on it everything on it's just you know premium for what it is you know which is an inexpensive trailer it's a way to get the kayaks down the road I've, I've taken this on a I don't know it's about a six hour trip one way down to Oak Creek and uh, in Blackwell Texas uh, last last year I pulled it there and back and I got out and checked a couple times. Bearings never got hot. I was running 75, sometimes 80 miles an hour with this trailer loaded. Two 13 foot plus all the gear in the rod locker. Gave me no trouble. Bearings were never hot. Uh, the hubs were never hot. And uh, I pulled it in driving rain. It started raining when we left here. We drove all the way there in just, I mean, literally blinding rain. At one point, we actually had to pull over 
I got there and the rod locker on the inside was dry as a bone. So I know that my, my seal held. Everything works great on it. And I got a guy coming to pick this up today. He's going to take it off my hands. It's just in the garage there taking up space since I don't really use it like I thought I would. When I go to that Hobie Pro Angler, I'm only going to have one kayak at that point. So I don't really need a trailer. I'll just use my bed extender and use the bed of my truck to carry it around. But anyways, that's the plan, guys. And uh, once I get these kayaks off after he gets here, he'll help me unload them. Then I'll show you guys what it looks like and what I did. Just in case you guys ever want to do something like this. I know all of you guys are capable. I mean, obviously, if I'm capable, you're capable of building something like this. And you may have given a thought to using a Harbor Freight trailer or a... You know, what is the other one? Northern Tools may have a trailer. And I, I suggest it. I mean, I've, I've used this one quite a bit. And I really like it. I think it worked out really good. It's perfect for the money and, and for what your needs are. Um, but yeah, let me let me get these kayaks off of here. And I'll show you what it looks like underneath. So you can like kind of have an idea of what I did. And then I'll tell you what I don't like about what I did. So you don't make the same mistakes. Alright guys, this is the uh, kayak trailer without the kayaks on it. So I use a four inch electrical conduit because it looks better than PVC, that white PVC. Then I put two and a half inch stabilizers on the side here. They're fully adjustable unistrut to hold them onto the uh, rod locker. And that's what she looks like. We'll lift it up and I'll show you underneath. So we lift up the top of the rod locker and it's got a carpeted bottom to store all your gear. And I put a remote control Multicolored LED light for nighttime when I come in and it's dark, which is pretty much every time I come in And that's pretty much what she looks like Now you could put like I was telling this gentleman We put gas shocks on this to make it a little easier to lift or you could put like he suggested some some swing down Props that come down when you lift up on it. It's pretty endless one thing I would do This is a thing that I wouldn't do twice Is I built this solid all the way around I would hinge this back part to where this this back folded down so you could reach in there and pull rods out while the kayaks were on top so one thing i didn't think through i built this and then loaded it full of gear and then put the kayaks on top strapped them down and couldn't get nothing out <laughs> and those kayaks are not light so but anyways guys if you want an idea of how to use a harbor freight trailer and build a kayak trailer this is the way to do it